Hello, this is David Olani Peckham, the host and creator of Let's Talk Creatives, a podcast talk show set up to engage with the creative community across the globe. And today's special guest is Ken Wadibu. He's a conceptual artist based in Nigeria. Thank you. Yes. Um, identity Crisis is another project. So, yeah, I'd like to talk about this, the yeah. idea behind it. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of people are like, oh, you're creating um, works for people who are probably learned or who are more matured. You know, kids you know, are not as matured, uh, are not matured enough to grasp this kind of conversation, to understand mm. this conversation, right? Mm. But there's one thing they understand, social media, right? Mm. And weirdly, you figure out that, you know, when, we, when I was young, there was no social media at, at the point, right? It was when I got to, I think, uh, secondary school, I joined Facebook, right? And before then, you figure out that we are actually growing up, you know, to certain things that our parents said. You know, we are growing up to understanding what our parents said, what they thought, what they understood, informal, formal education. But the informal education was not worldwide. It was basically around our society, right? But with social media, you have a whole world uh, input on education, on educating the kids. So a child of seven years is using a phone already. He's on Instagram. He's on Twitter. In fact, a child of two years is on Instagram already. Right? It gives you that idea that, you see, these people are about to start up a new generation, well, about to start up a new generation of social media born people. Yeah. Right? And that generation is basically one of the most depressed generation of our time, if you think about it. Right, because then you say we say hearing things like uh, body shaming. Then we start hearing things like blackmailing on social media. Then we start hearing things like this and that, this and that. And it, it was too fast. The 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 defect and the uh, and the demerits of social media came too quick, right? And it was now left to me to bring that out to the public and say, Yo, face, um, you use Facebook, calm down. You use Twitter, calm down. Look at the merits and don't let it affect you. So this has a feeling, this has a way of, you know, messing up an identity of a child. And then they grow up having this identity that is born from Facebook or is born from what they see. You know, people don't even have parental guidance on, on children's phone anymore. So children can watch anything as they want to work. And, and this, fine, mother like controls, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, this mother controls what the child sees. So what she did was she put a parental guidance, in a, she turned it on, and the child, when she, she, she sees blood, it becomes pixelated. When she sees violence, sexual activities, it becomes pixelated, right? And you think about it. Yeah. And you think about it. We, don't, we can't do that in our time. We can't pixelate what a child sees. So you can imagine how many things children see every day on social media. So yeah. that... So that 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 sort of like gives even more narrative to the work itself. It's called identity mm. crisis because you yeah. you are losing your identity to these platforms that really do not yeah. define who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's very tough, especially if you're super young. You know, what's susceptible yeah. to buying into these ideas like you see in social media. And like, I guess like when we were younger, it wasn't that bad because you're only, it's confined to your classroom and your mates. Yes, exactly. But now it's, it's like, oh, it's like, the, you know, like Facebook and all these social media is like the new classroom. It's like yeah, the new, it's like the new peer group, you know. True, yeah. Influence a child. Obviously, as an adult, you understand like a lot of this stuff can be fake. A lot of this stuff can be smoke and mirrors. But as a child, yeah. you don't know any better. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But I think it's a very powerful message, you know. Yeah, so, no, yeah, very powerful message. Yeah, great Thank work. You. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I, think the net, I think the network is back. It's good now. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I have to check my internet connection as well. Um, cool. So, can you um, carry on with the headline series? 
Yeah, okay, so the headline series was born from a dialogue I had with the senator, right? Uh, we were talking, and then he was like, you know, Ken, I can put you in the newspaper and say you are the biggest, richest artist in the world. Uh, at least 80% of the people who read it will believe it. Right? Oh, yeah. mm. And, you know, he didn't understand, but it, it, it got me thinking. What we read in newspapers, are they real? Then I started making my own research, right? And then I figured out that every top thing I see on the newspaper, like the main, the, the, the pressing issues are being hidden inside the newspaper and the headlines are the less pressing issues, right? So I was confused whether that was a desperate attempt to not scare the public or because people were actually buying rights to what this newspaper should put in their cover, right? So I started making more researches. So I, because I, I have, I have a, a, a PR, a, a friend who is a PR and who works in the newspaper industry. And he was like, of course, people buy right, rights to put whatever they want to put in the newspaper, in front of newspaper, are the headlines. So you see a newspaper say, you see the headline meant to read, mini, uh, was meant to read maybe uh, president of Nigeria never speaks to its citizens, mm. right? But it reads uh, something less problematic, like uh, a school getting, a school having hoodlums. Not, not a school, but an uncomputed building having hoodlums. Or right. police parties, someone stealing fruits on the streets. Mm. That, that's, 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 that's not the point. There are more pressing issues in the world today that we need to put in the front covers of the newspaper so people are aware, right? So all my work, if you know that I'm trying to always keep people aware and conscious of what's going on. So I decided, you know what? Let me pick a newspaper, blow it up, because I needed it to make a statement, right? Because I like making my statements with large words, right? So blow it up and then change the headlines, I sort of do a wordplay and we change all the headlines. Either cancelling the previous headlines or highlighting parts of the headlines that are meant to be, you know, very much more, con the people are meant to be concerned with or, you know, pinpointing or making commentaries on the newspapers that, that you know, I feel represent what they ever they put in the newspaper. Right, then I cut out the picture that was put there because if I'm changing the headlines, I'm changing the picture too. They need to correlate. And I take that out and I put someone who is trapped in a plastic bag. Because I'm trying to say we should, we're trapped in this society that lies to us, that deceives us, that distracts us from the truth. And my point is that I'm bringing out the truth in newspapers as an art form. And I'm showing it as a regular Lagos stand, newspaper stand. And I'm asking you to actually pay attention to these things. Don't look at the newspaper and what you read. Look at what they are not saying. It's what they are not saying that actually becomes what they are meant to say or what is meant to be in the headlines and what is going on in society. So that was, that was how the work was born. It was born by, you know, me researching up the newspapers and seeing that, you know, well, these things are, are actually real. They are actually hiding a lot of truths from us. And we see a lot of people buying newspapers. They don't even, a lot of people have not stopped buying newspapers, not because of the fact, not because the culture has died, but because there is no proper news that uh, is being, you know, doc documented inside there. So that, that was what Beth, the whole work, the headlines is. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, you often see like, um, you know, you know, put like pressing issues that are, you know, that are failed to be reflected. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, exactly. and like, um, I honestly do believe, like, in world media or the big major media companies, they do have their own agenda. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really like there, there's a level of agenda. So, and especially with this current situation with the uh, COVID, there's loads of conflicted information. So it makes you what's, true. True. what's going on. Too, there's too much, you know, conflicting information. So. Am I supposed to leave, believe these guys or these guys? You know, you have to think 
sit down and do your own research. And do your own research, true. I, 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 true. A couple of times I saw a couple of um, posts by a uh, couple of um, posts by some newspaper companies and I'm like, nah, but this, not, but this is not what I saw last week or but this is not what I saw yesterday. Right? Yeah. I, I, I remember when a uh, newscaster used uh, a hospital uh, room to signify a California hospital and then I saw the same room to signify a French hospital and I'm like, you see, what's going on? Is it that they built the same structure or somebody's lying to us? Yeah. So. Yeah. So that is, is very important to understand. Um, when you're seeing like um, a... That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like with the media, you have to be super careful. Um, what yeah, they're true. trying to convey, what they're trying to um, present. Because... There's certain things they present to you and you have to question, is it the full picture? Is it the whole picture? You can't just yeah. point to like um, a headline. Uh, you really need to understand like, oh, is this really what's going on there? You know? Yeah, you need to dig deep yourself. You need yeah. to dig deep. For example, there might be an incident in this country or that country. Like maybe this person got attacked in this country. Yeah. But the full picture because it's on that story. So, yeah, so you have to, like, do you know what I mean? Like, you have to be quite careful because um, certain articles, it, it triggers people. Like, there's certain people, they get triggered, and that might come out through violence or whatever. Yeah, hatred, conflict, yeah. You know, or conflict. Yeah. It, it stirs conflict and different, you know, bad negative things. So, it, yeah. it's, hap it's happened a lot around the world. It's even happened here in Nigeria where yeah. the news like stirs up some kind of conflict, controversial conflict, something that was never meant to happen. Yeah. The first that just picked the good news and the right news, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's why I think it's very important. Don't just buy into the headlines. Um, yeah. <laughs> do a little bit of research, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a lot, yeah, it's a lot of research. I, I, I remember doing it for Miami Basel. Uh, for the uh, my, for the Miami Art Week, and yeah. all I could think of is, are they going to understand what I'm trying to create? Mm. Because I was sort of like creating the Lagos newsstand in a place where all they know is like a cause or jacuzzi or like this, you know, beautiful shiny looking art piece, and all I'm bringing is like a wooden desk. I'm putting like the newspapers and stacking it like with stones just to create that experience of a Lagos newsstand. So probably maybe next time I'm showing it, I'll probably put like a video of uh, because because in, uh, the previous one I attached like an audio. So probably I'll attach like a video of you know this newsstand so that people can even more connect with it even better. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's very good anyway. Uh, so on to the next one. Uh, the bad mentality. Ah, yeah. So, uh, that so that piece was when I said was well, that piece, those series of pieces, those series of works, birthed this new idea that I call packages in brown skin. Right? It was. I was trying to group two sets of people together as one and sort of create a consciousness that represents them. So you can see that border, not that border indeed, which of the world that actually blew me completely on social media and even in the world, right? A lot of people connected with the piece too much. And I understood why, because, you know, there are questions you ask, who are your friends? Who are really, who are, we? Who are your true friends? And it's until I got to London, I understood that even family might not be real families. Right, family might just be for the name. Not everybody would signif uh, signify uh, blood as family. You might just probably be blood, but I can probably call a friend a family. So then you start questioning everything, all the lot, all the things you've learned, all the things you understood while growing up. Who are your brothers? Who are your sisters? Who are your friends? Right. So it's called thy brother is not thy brother indeed, because when you think about it. When you think about the hatred going on, when you think about xenophobic xenophobia, when you think about um, when you think about ISIS, when you think about um, 
uh, Boko Haram. When you think about the, all the things going on in the world, you figure out that there's a lot of bad mentality that triggers all these things, that triggers the, the actions and the movement. But the funny thing is that we're all same people. Mm. There is no difference we breathe. The same air. So, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. So, after we're all the same people, it just falls. And you figure out that if we're all the same people, then why is the violence there? Why are they, why are they stereotypes? Why are they, why are they, or they are bigger than other people? Why are all these things? Why are all these constructs and all these um, things? Thing that then I thought of this idea of a sin is called the bad mentality. Because then it's not because of our difference, it's because our mentality is different. Because somebody told us what to do. Why we should hate certain kind of people? Why should you hate a black person because you're white? Why should you hate a white person because you're black? Why should you hate an Asian person? Why should you hate, you know? All these things are things that we grew up learning and knowing or being part of. So it's sort of like a mentality. It's not, it does not define us, but it's a mentality. Two characters, the, the receiver and the doer, it won't work. Who only one phrase there to say we say we're equal, we're different, but there's a mentality, there's an idea that lingers around us and that causes violence and everything. So that that was what birthed the idea of the piece, bringing consciousness to certain events in life. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, cool. The truth series, the truth series. Ah, okay. The <laughs> Okay, that was, that was, uh, that was, uh, so, um, I was remembering when I used to lie to my dad. <laughs> my dad would be like, look me in the eye, <laughs> tell me the truth, right? And weirdly, it looks like, it sounds funny, but you can't actually look a person in the eye mm. and tell them the truth. That's yeah. if you're not a stone yeah. cold liar, yeah. right? Yeah. When you figure out that the eye is basically like a light detector. Yeah, yeah. Right? So it's like, it's me saying, you know, look at the eyes. Don't, don't try to, you know, play smart. Or try, look straight in the eye to know a truth from a lie. So it was basically from that idea, the fact that my dad used to tell me, look, in the, look at my eye. And I was like, okay. <laughs> it's around that. And then you see the triangle there. Yeah. Sort of like represents this all seeing eye. Yeah. So so that eye is not just that person's eye, but it's everybody's eye. So look yeah. through everything and see the lies and see the truth. I'll be able to differentiate with the truth from the lies. So that's so it's as easy as it's, a, it's an easier foundation, but it's a very it's a very personal work to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, so, that's funny though. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so talking about the nylon series, um, yeah, if you could talk us through uh, these pieces. Yeah. The nylon series. Ah, the nylon series. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the nylon yeah. series was, was really interesting. Oh, that was one of my best works. That's one of my best works. I, I was really disappointed when I showed it in Nigeria, and people didn't get it. I think because they thought it was a picture. Yeah. It's one of my best yeah. works. The reason why it's one of my best works is because it's deep. I, I was looking for things to create, right? And then I saw a nylon. And I saw, I think, a friend of mine bought something. So she was trying to read what it was in the nylon. And I was on the other side, and I looked at him. He said, the thing is, I kept making faces like, but well, he couldn't see me. Not because he was too concerned with what he was reading, but because he can't see through a nylon, actually. 
you can only see very blurry. You can see a silhouette, or you can see almost, you know, you can almost not see anything to a, mm-hmm. tile, to a plastic tile, right? So, and I started thinking, you know what, when you think about it, a lot of people live this life. I used, to tell, I used to tell my students, I'm like, be conscious of who you are. Like, come out of yourself and look at yourself. People don't do that. People don't step out of, the, of themselves. I look at myself and say, oh, how do I move my hands? How, how does my head work? Who am I in this whole seven billion cacophony of people? What, what do I represent? Right? Why, how come I have, I could pay rent? Last, last couple of years, I was, you know, my parents, like, being an old dog, and now look at where I am. Like, people don't step out from themselves. And because of that, people lose their way. Why right? people just live life, live life, live life, and eventually they're like, oh, no, like, we are there right now. They don't know how they got there. They don't know what happened for them to get there. So, and I could see that from the, it, I, I could figuratively see that when he looked through, when I was trying to make faces, but he couldn't see me, right? So yeah. when I paired, when I said creating the works, I paired people, putting people close to the nylon, you see that they are, they are kind of trying to observe what's going on, right? So I used myself because I was the only one in my studio at that time, in my I, I was telling my parents I when I did that work, and I was basically the only one there. So I used myself. So I, I, I made like this structure, this little structure, mm. where I put a nylon and I set my camera and I could turn my face like this. And the camera would take my picture. So I'll, I'll look at it and you know, visualize it and understand it. And it became, it became quite interesting. It became interesting because even when I was taking the picture, I didn't. I couldn't see. I turned my camera so I could see like a selfie, but I couldn't see the selfie. Right? It just explained the work completely. That you know, a lot of people go through life. We can't see the future. We can't see ourselves. We are not aware of ourselves. We cannot see a flashback. We have not checked the mirror. We never know what's going on. Just living life the way we can live life and how we think we can. And eventually, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, lots people in situations where they cannot get out from. Right, lots of problems and issues. So it was my desperate attempt to say, you know, pay attention, stop for a moment and pay attention to what is around you, to yourself, to who you are, what you represent. And then probably you'll be conscious enough. That's why it's called, it's, a, it's called Nylon Series, but each of the pieces are called Lost Consciousness 1, Lost Consciousness 2, Lost Consciousness, because all these people have lost consciousness, have lost their consciousness. And then you figure out that each of this nylon has a kind of like opacity, right? This, the, the transparency differs, right? There's the transparent nylon, there is the nylon with the lines, there is the pure water nylon. So I was just experimenting with different types of nylon to see yeah. how well people can, how people can see through that nylon. I need to today to talk about how people use consciousness with life. Uh, so it's a pretty interesting thing. Then the newspapers around. It, for me, it didn't really, it didn't really add to the narrative. What it did was it brought out the work, even exactly how I wanted it to come out. Mm. Like the work was too normal without the newspapers. The newspapers sort of like exposed the world. But when I started hearing some critics talk about the piece, they started bringing the newspapers in play and saying that you see the news, that the news sort of like takes up our consciousness. We read the news and we get up carried away by society we never take time to pay attention to ourselves so yeah so the work works the work is uh, for me it was one of my best pieces one of my best works cool. so um it's just yourself in the pieces you use yourself in all the pieces yeah hello all of it all of it for myself <laughs> yeah and what medium did you use um, to produce all the pe- all of these pieces? What medium did you use? Uh, from the beginning to the end of what we're talking about, it's charcoal. Uh, for the Valley of Nothing series, all, all my faces are done with charcoal mm. because 
who does not reflect light. So for me, I feel I prefer charcoal than graphite because yeah. I prefer the oil when I'm putting my faces because it does not reflect light. So it's whatever oil, all these things we give the word, stays there. There's no reflection of light, there is no you know, mobile of uh, some of the details, all the details are intact as well. So charcoal and collage basically charcoal. Charcoal and collage, charcoal and lighting with the marker. Mm. And yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, super, super impressive series, you know, the nylon. Like, it looks super realistic. <laughs> no, it's sick. It's